In this video, I'm digging into journaling for your well-being. So if you're just getting started with journaling, or if like me, you've given journaling a shot countless times, but it never seems to stick, then this video is gonna be perfect for you. So let's get started and make journaling simple and easy. If we haven't met yet, my name is Hannah, and I wanna welcome you to part two of my series about journaling. I was originally going to have this video be about journaling for both your well-being as well as creativity, but the more that I thought about it, the more that I realized that they each deserve to have their own video. So this one's going to be about starting a well-being journal, and then part three is going to be all about creative journaling. I'm also providing a link in the description to a free printable worksheet to go along with the video, so don't forget to download yours afterwards. At the bare minimum, all you need to get started is a piece of paper and something to write with, or your phone or a computer. Personally, I found that physically writing out my thoughts and ideas is what I prefer, but there's definitely reasons why you might prefer to type things out or verbally record your thoughts. So it could be due to things like having a physical disability or pain when you write. It might just be easier for you to get all of your thoughts out with an alternative method, or maybe you just feel like an electronic journal is gonna keep your entries more protected. So I found that I have less anxiety when I write things out versus typing, and I also just like the feeling of having a physical journal, so that's the method that works best for me, but it's perfectly fine if something works better for you. You don't need to feel bad if you need to do things differently, and as long as it's working for you, that's all that matters. In fact, journaling is really personal, and you're likely gonna find that when you start journaling, you're gonna develop your own style. So I'm gonna break down my process, but in no way do you have to journal in the same way that I do. Do what works best for you and find your own style. Okay, first things first. If you really wanna experience the benefits of journaling, then you're gonna to need to develop some sort of a habit. And if you're at all like I was when I started, the thought of actually starting one might be overwhelming. So growing up, I always wanted to be one of those people who kept a diary, and I started one at least five times, if not more. But after a few days of writing, I would just give up, and then I would have this empty diary lying around the house. I had no idea about what to write, and I was just also really awful about developing any kind of positive habits. So when I finally started a journal this last time, I felt all this pressure that I was putting on myself because I was assuming that I was gonna fail like every time previously. Luckily, I found some things that ended up helping me overcome that problem. The first was that I set up a reminder in my phone each day at a time when I knew that I could set aside at least five minutes to write. For me, I would do it right before bed so that I would have an easier time sleeping because I was able to get out all of my feelings, but the time of day doesn't really matter as long as it's something that you can commit to. After I finished journaling each day, I would mark off a day on my calendar because it would give me just enough of a reward to keep doing it. It was like getting to set my own record. And you can develop some sort of reward system for yourself that'll keep you on track. So once you develop the habit of keeping a journal, you won't need to keep doing these things, but to get started, it can be really helpful, especially if you have a hard time building discipline and sticking to things. And the other thing that I did, and this ended up being really helpful for me, was to get a really cheap little notebook like this one right here. And I got like three of these for like six bucks from Target. And the reason why this was really helpful for me was that it helped me to delay gratification. And what I mean by that is that I always wanted a beautiful journal like this one right here. But instead I got the cheap one and I told myself, that the only way that I would get to have a nice one is if I can fill up the cheap one. And it ended up working. Instead of allowing myself to have something that I wanted right away, I made myself work for it and in the process developed the habit. Okay, so next up is how to format your journal. If you're actually writing in a journal, I recommend doing a couple of things. So somewhere at the beginning of the book, write down what journal volume it is that you're starting as well as the beginning date. And then when you fill up the journal, you can put the end date. It might seem kind of pointless if this is your first journal and you haven't developed the confidence yet, but if this ends up becoming a constant in your life, which I really hope it will, and you go on to fill up tons of journals, then it's gonna be so much easier to keep track of them down the line. So the second thing that I always make sure to do is to write the date that the journal entry was made, as well as the time. So adding a timestamp is definitely a personal preference, 
but I like being able to see where my head might have been at at different times throughout the day when I look back. And I do this because although when I was first forming the habit of journaling, I stuck to a specific schedule, over time I would end up writing whenever I felt like I needed to do it. Okay, so now the technical stuff is out of the way, that means it's time to get to the heart of journaling, which is what exactly do you write? As you get started with journaling, it might feel kind of odd to get so raw with your feelings, especially if you're not comfortable sharing them already, but this is your safe place where you can be completely open. And this is one area that I feel sets itself apart from opening up to a therapist or a friend about how you're feeling because you don't have to worry about being judged or about being critiqued about your thoughts and feelings. If it's too hard to be completely honest at first, then start slow, but remember you're allowed to be angry, sad, happy, scared, excited, or any other kind of emotion and that your thoughts and feelings are very valid. So in my opinion, the goal with journaling is to work through any of those feelings, but it's important to also acknowledge your thoughts and emotions and not view them as silly or stupid. The more open that you can be with yourself, the sooner your body is going to start to feel safe and from there a lot of progress can be made. Let's say that you get started but you have no idea what to write about. If that happens, you can ask yourself some things like, did I experience any strong emotions today or even moments that I was feeling something but I wasn't sure what it was? This doesn't happen to me as often as it used to but there are definitely times where it feels like there's this black ball on my chest and it just doesn't feel good but it's not obvious to me why I'm feeling that way until after I ask myself that question, as well as what different things might be bothering me. Now, I might need to journal about several different things that could be the cause of the negative feelings that I'm having if I'm not sure, but by doing this, I'm typically able to feel better afterwards. And two other questions that you can ask yourself are, is there something that's constantly been on my mind, or what could be causing me to feel this way? With any of these questions, the answer might not be an aha moment, and it might even just be one word or feeling that pops up, but hopefully it'll give you something to write about. And from there, you can ask follow-up questions like, why is this bothering me, or what emotion is this causing me to feel? One thing's for sure though, if you're feeling a certain way, or if you just have something that you need to get out, write it down. The more comfortable that you get with knowing what you're thinking and feeling, the less likely it is that you'll need to start out by asking yourself those questions. A pattern that I've noticed within my journaling is that I'll usually start out by writing about whatever has a hold on me for that day and work from there. So an example of that would be if I was feeling anxious over something, I would start writing and just write everything I can think of about what I'm feeling and thinking without making myself use a filter. Usually when I do this, some of my heightened emotions will calm down and then I can start viewing the situation in a more rational way so I can work through what I'm feeling. Because of that, I've also found that I'm able to give myself advice that actually works for me and isn't so emotionally driven. And it also makes it easier for me to see areas that I might need to work on, but I can also develop empathy for others and even myself. This next tip might not happen every time, but something that I think can be helpful when journaling is to close out the entry on a more positive note or with something that you learned from what you just wrote or even just a positive affirmation. So when you're writing, if the last thing that you end on is something really negative, then it's likely that it's gonna be easier for your mind to gravitate back to thinking about that when you're done journaling. But if you can either end on something that you've taken away from your entry or a positive note, like something you're grateful for, then it's gonna be easier to stay more positive and in a positive place when you get done with your entry. Whether you've got a beautiful journal to write in or you just have your phone, there doesn't need to be anything standing in the way of starting your own journal and reaping the benefits. So just get started. If you found value in this video, then please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos on gaining your happiest, healthiest, and best self.